I'm Nick Pomeroy with PR Equipment here in Kearns, Texas. Hey, today we wanted to t jump in to another topic when it comes to this emissions, uh, kind of broader subject of emissions. We've done a video that talks a little bit about SCR slash DEF systems. This is going to be on the system that typically is found in tractors between 25 and 75 horsepower. There are some tractors larger than that that use it, especially older tractors. But primarily, you're going to see a lot of this in our 25 to, to 75 horsepower tractor range. Um, there, Emissions terminology gets a little bit blurry. A lot of people call things different things, but this is what's called a DPF system, but a lot of people call it a regen. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. But basically, an overview is the DPF system is a diesel particulate filter. And what we're trying to accomplish, and I'll show you what that looks like, this is the, this is the DPF. But on the diesel particulate filter, what we're trying to do uh, is trying to capture the particulate matter, the black smoke. Uh, we're trying to capture that so that it doesn't go into the environment. And so this is exactly what it says it is. It's a filter to capture those little particulates. Um, now, the rest of the system, what, what makes this, or what, what else goes in the system, is more or less just to maintain that filter. So the filter itself is, is a very simple filter that's just going to be capturing those. It's a fine micron filter that's going to capture all those particulates. But then that's going to plug from time to time. And obviously, we don't want to have to take this thing off and constantly blow it out or whatever it is. And uh, so we're going to more or less, we're going to have a maintenance procedure, which is what's called the regen procedure or regeneration. And so what we're doing in that, at that point is we are heating it up to burn out that soot and to go ahead and clean that filter back out. There's a number of different ways, and I'm not really, in this video, we're not really talking specifically about Yanmar, we're talking about the broader subject of emissions, because obviously we're a Yanmar and a Massey Ferguson dealer, but and there's different kind of theories, but it's all kind of the same. So in, in this system, it's what I guess what I would call a passive system. I don't know if that's the correct terminology, but in my world, that's what I see it as, um, because it does require a little user input. I don't think that that's, that's, that's a problem. I actually kind of like that, but more or less, as this thing begins to plug, um, it's going to display on the dash that, hey, the, the DPF filter is plugged and we need to go ahead and do a regeneration. And it's going to tell you to go ahead and push the button for three seconds and allow it to do that. In other systems like the Massey, it's going to automatically start the regeneration process and you can cancel it if you do not want to do it at that point. But I guess it's time to probably, we should probably talk a little bit about what factors go into when it'll need to regen, how quick it'll need to regen, things like that. Um, so from an operational standpoint, there are some things you can do to make the regen system work a little bit better. Um, so for one, the, uh, the more you run it, the more power you use, the hotter the engine runs and the less particulate matter that's produced. And so one thing I think a lot of folks, you know, running around at idle is not the best for a regen system. If that's the way you choose to run it, I completely understand, but you're going to have to regen it more often. Uh, and what that hour limit looks like is completely dependent on a bunch of variables, temperature, air temperature, uh, how hard it's being worked. Obviously, there's a lot of variables, so it can range. They typically kind of figure about a 50 hour is what they say the first one is. On a lot of our tractors, um, you know, I've seen it happen significantly sooner just depending on how the tractor is operated. But the, the harder you operate it, the hotter the engine gets, the less particulate matter that you produce. Um, it's kind of this general school of thought. So if you're working around the yard and just doing loader work, it's still not a bad idea to have those engine RPMs up to, you know, 16, 1800 engine RPMs, which will allow, like say, that, that will keep you from regening quite so often. Just work it a little bit harder. Um, but that being said, those are some things. So when that region happens is going to be dependent upon when it detects it. And so it actually has two pressure sensors it's looking at. It's got a, it's got a pressure, it's pulling pressure from before and after the DPF. So you can see these two little lines here. Uh, there's, a, there's a line here and a line here, and then there's a temperature sensor and temperature sensor. So it's looking at a couple things, but we're, we're looking at the, the differential pressure between the inside and the outside. And when that pressure begins to build, we know that the DPF is plugging and we need to fire it off. Now what we need to do to have that is we need temperature in the DPF. And so it's also looking at that pretty significantly as well. Now there's a couple ways these, these systems um, will regen. I think the majority of the way that they happen today, and I could be wrong on this, but uh, f for our systems, is we're going to burn it out, right? We're going to physically shoot flame into there and we're going to burn this thing out. We're going to get it really hot and, and, and burn out that soot. Um, and that's typically, it, but you can notice some different tones in the engine uh, because they're like, it could be shooting diesel direct or just changing timing and doing some different things. To, to heat that exhaust up and burn that out. And, that's, and that regen takes, 
I don't know, up to maybe 30 minutes, but typically it's completed within 30 minutes. Um, and so it, it's overall though, it, the system is relatively simple. It's not as crazy and complicated as it sounds. You probably hear people talking all the time about horrible experiences they've had with them. And I completely get that. These systems, when they first came out, were relatively new to the market and they were far from perfect and they're getting significantly better. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, th another thing that you can do to keep this system working well is don't, don't cancel a regen if you can avoid it. They put that, that process in place. There's always a way to cancel it or in this case, not start the regen because maybe you gotta be somewhere, right? You don't wanna make the wife mad if you got a wedding to be at or something. It's time to cancel that thing, right? We'll figure it out. Now, if you cancel the regen too many times or prevent it from starting too many times, it's going to go to the next stage of regeneration. And so it's going to ask you to do a passive or a parked regen. It's going to force you to sit still. And I should have mentioned that earlier. In, in most all of these tractors nowadays, it's, it's a regeneration that can be done while using the tractor. There are certain parameters, and I always suggest looking in your ops manual because uh, these systems do d are vary a little bit. But they've always got some sort of parameters, whether it be uh, coolant temperatures got to be at a certain level, maybe exhaust temperatures got to be a certain level, maybe a certain engine RPMs. There's always certain factors that have to be that have to be maintained before it'll kick off um, the regen. But if, like I say, if you cancel it too many times, it's going to go to that next level of regen, which is going to require a park regen. Or in extreme cases, um, it might go beyond that, and it's going to ask you to bring it into your dealer, and we can actually use our service tool to force it to do more or less a, a manual regeneration. Um, we don't have problems like that like we used to in the past. I mean, there are some tractors in the past that, that would get to that set stage a little quicker than they do nowadays, but these systems are significantly better than they've been in the past, and so these, don't, these aren't as big a concern as they used to be. Obviously, there are some things to consider. You, you want to keep your engine clean. You want to do that anyway, but obviously the exhaust temperature is coming up and being a little bit more elevated. It's, it's worth noting that keep these engines clean. We don't want birds building nests and things up there, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're heating this exhaust up and causing problems. Um, so there's some things as far as maintenance goes there. We want to make sure that, like say, we're, we're keeping, we need to be keeping all this area clean in general. But region is not the end of the world. It's uh, when it first came out, I, I, everybody was concerned about it and there were some problems, but overall, and, and it's worth noting, it's, it's also under a warranty. So as long as you do your part, this engine is warranted for five years and 3,000 hours as far as the emissions portion of it. So anything to do with the DPF, the, anything to do with the, the electronics or the, the, the fuel supply or anything like that, it's all gonna be warranted for five years and 3,000 hours as long as you're taking care of this tractor. So definitely some things to talk about or to, to be thinking about there. So I wanted to jump up in the cab and talk a little bit about what this looks like inside the cab. Um, so as far as I know, most all of these tractors, and I know for a fact the Massey Ferguson and the Yanmar tractors that we sell that do utilize the regen system, um, have some controls uh, basically right beside the steering wheel. Uh, in, the, in the Yanmar tractor, like we've been talking about, this is a system that requires you to start the regen. And so when it's time for a regen, and like say that can vary, it's gonna display on the dash with the light telling you it's time to regen. It's gonna be blinking and it's gonna flash or it's gonna beep at you. And then it's gonna display the message, hey, press and hold the regen switch for three seconds. And so here's the regen switch and you would push that for three seconds and it's gonna go ahead and start that regen. Um, we talked a little bit about the things that would prevent that from starting a regen, which is, you know, exhaust temp and things like that. So if you just hop up in your tractor, it's not going to, it's not going to let you start a regen. But once you get it warmed up, it's going to be time to start a regen. You push and hold that. On our Massey product, it's a little bit different system. So it's an automatic regen. And so as long as you're out working your tractor, it's going to go ahead and start the regen for you unless you cancel it. So it's going to have two buttons beside the steering wheel. One is the cancel button, and that's how you would stop a regen. If you, if you need to go somewhere, if you cannot do it, it's not safe to do it where you're at, push that button. Um, and then there's another button for a parked regen. And so in that situation, let's say, you know, you cancel it too many times, it's going to force you to do that park regen. But in most cases, uh, it's going to do the regen completely automatic and, and it's really not going to have much effect on you at all as long as you can continue to keep it working. Or if you have to, you can put it in park and, and keep the RPMs up and, and go inside the house, let it regen or whatever, make sure it's away from anything that it could, that could cause some problems. But regardless, um, as far as these re the, the systems go, like I say, a little bit of a difference, but the, but the, the core components and the features and the functions and the, the, the theory of operation is the same. It's more or less... 
we are trying to keep these diesel engines from producing that black particulate matter, that black smoke, and just keep it a little bit cleaner coming out the exhaust pipe. So all in all, the, these systems have come a long way, got a good warranty stand behind them. As long as you'll do a few things to keep them going, you're gonna find that you're gonna have really good success with these systems and it's not gonna give you the headaches that, that we might've seen in the past. If y'all have any questions or whatnot, feel free to reach out to us at PR Equipment. Uh, we want to be your Massey Ferguson Yanmar dealer, lawnmower dealer, any you know whatever it is. We're here kind of based on that line between Central and North Texas, um, but we're all over YouTube, we're all over the internet, social medias. So like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, throw us in the comments if you want to see us tackle another subject that we haven't already tackled. We'd love to look at doing that for you, uh, we, and thank you all for watching.